All right, so this is for week nine, uh, our relay activation and powering other loads uh, using the RCX. And so, again, we're discussing cascaded switching, which, in effect, is using a low-energy system to turn on or trigger another system. Our RCX output voltage will activate a relay, which closes a switch or a set of contacts, and that turns on the other load. So our loads when, for our fish tank project are going to be a heater and two solenoid valves that we'll open and close later. So as a reminder, the relay gives us a chance to have one circuit that drives another circuit. This is the idea of cascaded switching. So first this week you're going to take the voltage divider and, excuse me, take the RCX and drive a voltage divider. So this is a fixed value. This is the resistance of the coil inside the relay. And this is the one you're going to have to determine. We'll go over this a little bit more in a second. But what we're going to do is figure out once you've got this going, compare the power that's absorbed by these two resistors to the power uh, that the RCX is providing or can provide. Then there's going to be the secondary circuit uh, that's going to have a second power supply that is, has certain power abilities, and then that's going to be driving our load, which again is our heaters and our solenoid valves. We're going to be measuring the power output there as well. So I'm not going to show how to do the metering to measure the current today. Uh, it'll be a repeat of last week with a few exceptions, and I'll mention those as we go on. So, um, we did a little bit of breadboard work, and again, if, you, if we look quickly here at the um, breadboard system, um, we're going to be working with this again. So let's describe it back here. Again, we've got the 12-volt power supply that comes in through a fuse. Those two wires, plus and minus, drive these edges, the red and blue edges. The dots or holes for pins along the side are all tied together so that the red side is all 12 volts and the blue side will be the ground. Uh, another way to look at it is plus and minus. Either way, we've got the positive side that we need to keep track of. Now, on the lower sections where there's a whole bunch of um, columns and rows, the columns are what's important. Um, the, the rows A through E are all tied together in columns and the rows F through J are all tied together. These two columns up and uh, top and bottom are not tied together. So um, again, the edges that are red and blue have connections horizontally here, and the lower rows and columns are separate. A through F, excuse me, A through E makes contact here, F through J makes contact, but they are not connected across. All right, so that puts us, uh, it's our bedboard, breadboard basics revisited. Uh, we'll, you'll see me use those in just a second. Now, let's talk about that primary circuit, the RC, what the RCX is going to do for us. Again, the goal for this voltage divider application is to choose R1 such that the resistance of the coil, or R2, shown here, is, creates the desired voltage drop across this coil, the coil voltage that you're going to get from the data sheet. Now, I've got a question mark here because you need to find out what that is from the data sheet. Now, for this um, voltage divider circuit, the voltage on each resistor is given, of course, by Ohm's law, uh, current times resistance, and current times resistance. The voltage source is our RCX, which, as we found last week, provides about 9 volts. And the, if you watch the voltage around the loop, we, have nine, we start with 9 volts, we drop some of it on R1, and we drop the rest on R2. And so the voltage source is equal to voltage 1 plus voltage 2, and that's 9 volts for us this week. So you'll solve this for R2 and find out what you should be using. And then you'll be selecting from a group of them, a group of resistors that we have to create this circuit. So once you get this circuit running, you'll be hearing the relay contacts opening and closing. It'll be pretty obvious. And we'll want to measure the power in this circuit. Remember, our work from last week allowed us to make sure that um, what power the RCX can provide. So you're going to compare the power drawn this week to your efforts last week. All right, so let's put together this circuit right here. All right, so let's grab the relay here and get started. So I'm going to flip it over here carefully, and you'll notice that the two contacts that line up on the left-hand side, these happen to be the coil contacts. And so if you uh, ask your instructor or peer mentor, you can measure the resistance across the coil, and that'll be your R2 for your um, uh, voltage divider calculations. On the right-hand side, the offset contacts are the contacts that actually open and close as the relay controls them. And so I'm going to roll this over and plug it in. 
All right, so now we want to complete this circuit. We've got the power coming in, and we need to uh, jump it across. But we need to go through that resistor, which I set right here. So this is just uh, some unknown resistor. Uh, you're going to choose yours in class, and so after doing your math, so I'm going to plug this in here and plug it in here. So again, I made uh, the resistor plug in on column one, which is the same column as the positive side of this volt, uh, power supply from the RCX. And then on the second side, the circuit's going to go into one contact through the coil and out the other side. So now we need to connect um, this side here. So let's take this one here. I'm going to plug it in also on column nine and take it over to column one to close the circuit. So now we've got energy coming uh, around uh, the, the circuit. And so I have to I notice I have something wrong here. I have to plug in the uh, power that came loose. So I'll plug that in. All right, so now when I act, I've got the relays, uh, the RCX set up to run at power level five. And uh, if you listen carefully, you'll hear the relay activate. Uh, it's barely audible. barely audible. So, uh, it does seem to be working, um, and we can check that here in uh, just a couple of minutes, okay? So let's go move on to the next piece here. So back to the cascaded switching. So this is, we finished the primary side, and you'll take power and current measurements on uh, the relay and the resistors, but on the cascaded switching side, the secondary side, Again, the relay contacts we just put together, we could hear them opening and closing. Now we've connected it, we'll connect a power supply and the resistive loads uh, in with that and close that circuit. And we'll be able to use the RCX to power this circuit. So we're gonna set this up on the breadboard and then you're gonna have to measure the voltage and current through this part of the system and then calculate the power. Our concern here is do these loads per ask for too much power from the power supply. So uh, in, also in this unit, you're gonna have to check the power supply to see what its rating is. Um, so you're gonna take current measurements for both loads. First, I'm also gonna do just a simple light bulb. So let's uh, get this set up and uh, take those, uh, demonstrate that. All right, so again, the relay contacts are offset somewhat. And so what we wanted to do is we know that red is the positive, from the power supply, and we want to run it through the switch, and we know this is happens to be on row 15 here. All right, so the positive comes through the switch, and then um, doo -doo 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 -doo, out of the switch, um, and it's offset, if you remember, so it's gonna be on pin 14. So I'm gonna take the green wire here that goes out to our terminal blocks. What we're doing is we're going to send the power out so that we can attach different loads here in this location. And so, again, we come out of the plus into pin 15, uh, row 15, column 15, excuse me, and across through the set of contacts that will close, out, and back over the terminal block. From here, we'll attach, for now, we're going to go ahead and attach this light bulb. So across here. And so it goes out through the light bulb back to ground. So that's our simple circuit. Out of the power, through the contacts. Out of the contacts, out through the load, back through the load, and to ground, or the negative side of the battery power supply. So now we should be able to see when I activate the RCX, the light comes on, the light comes off. So that's our first power supply. So I. You may have to measure the current on this this load, um, but more importantly, the other loads. We'll set this one aside, and so from here, you have to check the current drawn and the power drawn by these other two loads. This is our resistor we'll be using for our heater and our tank. So I'm connecting it directly, but you're gonna have to wire in the um, uh, current meter so that you can measure power and then you can measure voltage right across these terminals here. So again, uh, this LED will light up when the power goes on. Uh, this will get warm, but not very quickly. So the power is on, and if you hold it for a second, you'll see that it's starting to warm up. So that's your first one. Again, you're going to have to set this up to measure current going through this and voltage across it to figure out the power drawn by this resistor. 
And I say heater and resistor interchangeably because a resistor just heats up the water. So we'll shut this off and we'll swap this out. So that's your one other load. The next item is our relay contact. So if we look quickly, these are our solenoid valves. Again, they're 12 volt operated. So we have one wire um, connected directly across that. We'll have these connect these in here and finally across here again you'll have to put in the current meter to make, take a proper current measurement now these the resistor and the, uh, the solenoid valves will draw much more current so you, you'll have to modify the current setting on the meter we'll talk to you about that in class as necessary so I'm going to pull this over here so you can hear it so light will come on indicating there's voltage going out and you should hear the relay activate, the solenoid valve, excuse me. All right, so that's this, the last one that you'll need to do. Again, power measurements on the solenoid valve, heater, and probably the small lamp if I remember correctly. So those are the two circuits. Later on you'll make these neat, but that's the primary measurement. Let's take a look at a few key items here. So. Again, on data collection, use the spreadsheets to capture the data and complete the calculations for you. All right. um, in the metering, the RCX, or the primary circuit that we did first, is a low current. It's the same uh, meter connections as last week. The heater and solenoid valves are high current. You need to change the meter to use the 10 amp setting, change the wiring as needed. We can show you that in class. Um, and then work it out as a team first and then ask us for verification. And lastly, um, make sure everyone knows how to set up the meters for voltage and current measurements. This is a skill we want you to know before you leave this semester and so practice it now make sure everyone understands. That's it for week nine and we'll um, see you in class.